Hey everybody! Welcome back to Northern Land Place of Binding of Isaac. Afterbirth. So far so good. So easy. So Eden. Easy breezy beautiful. Cover girl. Gemini, Samson's Lock, and the Bible. XAS6, 6NF8. Um, I think it's okay. You know, Gemini, I've always said, and by always, I mean literally this one time, I've always said that it's kind of just like a Ludovico technique that's attached to your dang old head. I may get that key uh, for the cost of a bomb, by the way. I'm just slightly frightened about the repercussions of it right now. I really did not think they would hit me through Gemini. Oh, Polyphemus is so good, too. Um, so my days of not hitting enemies and instead relying on Gemini to do all the damage are now over. Now I will hit enemies, destroy them, and, you know, I will scatter your ashes. Your world will be no more, as Michael A.L. Fox wrote in, of course, the classic avant-garde piece of cinema Dragon Slayer doppelganger. Okay. We're fine. We will use a bomb for a key. Hopefully we'll get a red heart out of it as well. We'll probably use a bomb for a penny plus a key up here as well. Just balance our situation out a little bit more. Uh, and we'll totally have a shot at an arcade, which is awesome, considering that we're going to have 3 HP. At least presumably have 3 HP. The Bible, you know, as far as a, uh, a space bar item, is really bad. Or pretty bad, at least. But I'm sort of hoping that at least we can use it, um, you know, on a boss fight if a boss has creep or something like that. We also could have used it to get that key now that I think about it. But even as we finished that fight, I was like, ah, maybe I'll save it and use it later. All right, number one rule of Northern Lion plays Isaac. You see a double key room, you go to it. Pretty much nullified the uh, speed upgrade. We might still have a slight speed upgrade as a result, but... Uh, our speed is really bad, as is our rate of fire. Like, this is not me taking my uh, my hand off the, the fire button too frequently, although, uh, admittedly, right now I am. Um, it's, it's largely just really, really slow rate of fire. Now, of course, we make up for it with pretty awesome damage uh, as a result of Polyphemus and, like, a mild form of piercing shot as well, but uh, I wouldn't mind some tears upgrades. I also wouldn't mind getting a key, like, right now. Alright, close enough. And by close enough, I mean it doesn't do the job at all, but that's okay. I, I really think that, barring a full run reroll, we're set on this run. You know, they've just given us too much too early to be afraid. And this will just make my life easier. There's a key. I thought I could fly over that, but thankfully it didn't punish me, which is one of the rare times that ends up happening, I think. With five bombs, we actually... Like, if we get Magic Mush here, we're in, in such a good spot. Even Liberty Cap... Is, is almost good enough to make me like more excited. Instead we get Relax, Balls of Steel, which is awesome, and one makes you larger, which is at least fun, novel, if not particularly useful. Uh, we're gonna be way ahead of schedule for Boss Rush, and that's pretty crazy, because on this floor we've actually, you know, gone to both secret rooms, we're gonna do every single room, and we popped a world card, so, you know, we didn't necessarily have to do that. Although it's almost like harder to avoid on the first and second floor. Uh, going to every room. We'll definitely take PhD. Uh, I think we'll get that. I think we'll get this. And that's our teleport card. And honestly, the game has been very kind to us. So what do you do when the game is very kind to you? You give back. And this time we're going to give back, you know, as much money as they'll let us try to get our donation machine in a nice place. And by as much money as they'll let us, of course, I mean as much money as we can while still having five cents so we can, you know, have a good base for the future and also maybe be able to donate. Uh, or maybe be able to get an arcade, I should say. Which is really just a donation of blood, which is something completely different. And by different, I mean exactly the same. What am I even talking about? Alright. A Tinted Rock. I keep thinking that that is the fastest enemy I've ever seen. That enemy is not even Usain Bolt. Instead, it is a marathon runner, like that 85-year-old marathon runner who ran a sub-four-hour marathon and made the rounds in the news recently. It's a ridiculous time. That's amazing. This man should be very... He's probably extremely proud. Why is he, uh, you know, a marathon runner? Because I evaded him with my incredible hops and then later found that he had still chased me ceaselessly like the supernatural creature that is the namesake of the movie It Follows. That's right, that movie's about a serial killer called It Follows. <laughs> it Follows had a really rough childhood, and then, you know, 
Well, you know the rest. It's just a, your standard old Stephen King clown murder story. It's a clown murdering other clowns. Not a clown murdering normal people or normal people murdering clowns. Don't get it twisted. You know what? I don't like you, Ragman. And I don't care if you know it. We're getting our deal with the devil. We're gonna take our shot speed and damage upgrade. We're gonna take black powder, and we're not gonna take multi-dimensional baby. And the reasoning for that is, I figured, it's kind of weird, but like, the desire to take both, the, the desire to take the second one goes down after taking the first one because the relative cost of our HP is higher. So both of those items would become worse if we took one of them. Now, multi-dimensional baby with Polyphemus might actually be a lot better. But um, I kind of like the way that uh, Black Powder, I wouldn't say it forces you to play differently, but it incentivizes playing a little differently. And, you know, if you can just do a little dipsy doodle like that, for example, you can have some fun with it. And our speed isn't that bad. So I think our HP is good enough to do this and not really be afraid of things, especially getting two spirit hearts out of it. And you know what? Eh, I'm going to teleport. I think that's sensible. Uh, we probably want Blue Candle here, because it's maybe still one of the best spacebar items in the game, and we are rolling with maybe one of the least exciting and, you know, not necessarily bad, but not particularly strong uh, space, bars item, space bar items in the game as is. Um, I'm not really the world's biggest fan of the in-game Bible here. Unfortunately, this is a room where I would definitely have rather had uh, multi-dimensional baby. But Gemini's doing great work. You know what would be an awesome item? BFF. A AKA double damage for Gemini only right now. Alright, there's Magic Mush, which is uh, obviously ridiculously strong. Pretty much made our last run uh, pop off when it was in a position of relative scarcity. Then we went to a position of relative affluence, and I was very happy to see that. That's probably a Bible room right there. We can get two tarot cards, and if one of them is a, uh, a teleporter... Then we haven't really suffered for my decision earlier. Empress? Good. Judgment? Probably better. And we can at least blow up that judgment and, and probably get a little closer to, uh... To Black Candle. And by Black Candle, I mean Blue Candle. Blue Candle. Boo Candle! Happy Halloween, everybody. I... I, I want to be careful with the way that I say this, because I don't want to offend anybody, and Halloween's a very sensitive subject. People change their, you know, Twitter handles and their Twitter avatars, you know, they get in the season the same way, like, and, and I agree with this, December is like, it, at least if you celebrate Christmas, December is like the Christmas month. You're like, you know, 25 days of preparing for Christmas, then it's there, and then you're like, oh shit, there's New Year's as well, I forgot, that's crazy, that's like next week, wow, time flies, man. Um... And if you don't celebrate it, maybe your, your month shakes out a little differently. But, you know, for me at least, December's always been like the month of Christmas. But Halloween has been picking up steam. In Canada, it's a little different too, because we have Canadian Thanksgiving in October. We just call it Thanksgiving. Unless we're trying to, you know, placate Americans. Um, but, uh, I can't believe we didn't get any money out of this. But Halloween, it's, it's a popular holiday. It is actually like my second least favorite holiday. My least favorite quote-unquote holiday is is St. Patrick's Day. Because people use it as an excuse to act like the worst possible versions of themselves. Let's throw that, this down. And it's not like, oh, NL doesn't like having fun. It's, it's, it's nothing like that. Grab this and we're going to try this. Rather... Did get a teleport card. I'm just a little scared. I'm not going to get it to pay out, but we probably are better on HP than I think we are. And we'll take this. You know, I like having fun, and, and in my youth, I did celebrate the odd St. Patrick's Day, and I celebrated accordingly. I'm not going to, you know, pull the wool over your eyes. But when I see, like... Oh, we had so much more HP. It, what bums me out is when I see, like, you know, 55-year-olds, and they're in a bar at, like, 10 a.m. celebrating St. Patrick's Day, and I'm like... I mean, maybe this is ignorant, but you could just, like, have a drink. You don't you don't need to just wait for St. Patrick's Day and be like, Oh, now it's okay to drink at 10 a.m. Like, it's never okay to drink at 10 a.m., probably, like, from a human body physiology standpoint. But, like, as long as you know that, you don't need to wait for, like, the one day where people can't judge you, I think. But maybe I'm missing out on it. Also, I kind of feel like if you were Irish... And maybe I'm just, you know, I'm protecting the feelings of people who don't need their feelings protected. They can, you know, stand up for themselves. But 
I would be pissed if like one day a year internationally, or at least in the U.S., was like, you know, Saint Mounty Day. Pretend to be an RCMP agent, and then they just like put on a, you know, a fucking you know Canadian flag shirt. And it's like, on, on on Americans Canada Day. Everybody wears red, and you drink Molson Canadian. And then I, I'd be like, yo, that's that's not what we're all about here. I think it to some extent perpetuates a negative stereotype of the culture. But you know, that's that's really up to. Up to you. you, you know, if you live in Dublin or Belfast, you're probably getting, like, fat tourism dollars every St. Patrick's Day. You just kind of grin and bear it, and then you take their money, and you, you know, spend it on whatever you want, I suppose. But I, Halloween, for me, I've never really enjoyed it, even as a kid. I was like, look, why don't we dispense of this, uh, rigmarole? You you bought the candy to give it to children. I am a child, give me the candy. Why do we have to go through this trick-or-treat, you know, small talk nonsense here? It's You're not actually going to scare me, unless you're a terrible person. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm an eight-year-old child. You're not going to, you know, come out with your head decapitated. Or at least that, that didn't happen when I was a kid. Now there's, like, intense haunted houses. And then, like, I actually... Stu- and I recognize, by the way, that this is also... Ooh, see what this is. Um, this is also just, like... As a kid, people were like, oh... I didn't realize, NL, that you were that kid. Yeah, I mean, probably there were times when I was that kid, if I'm being honest. I'm going to take Satanic Bible, and we'll just roll with that. I don't know, what's what's less fun, Satanic Bible or Blue Candle? At least this way we're forced to use our, our Polyphemus with really low rate of fire, which is kind of interesting. So then, like, in fifth grade, I was like... Mom, Dad, I don't really want to do Halloween anymore. And they were like, that's the dopest news ever. I guess Halloween, you know, you get to see your kid in a costume and it's cute and you, like, take pictures for posterity and stuff like that. But then you, like, come home from work and then you got to go, you know, walk around and be like, yeah, I'm a Ninja Turtle, you know? They were pretty stoked that I decided not to do Halloween anymore. And as is common in many of my recent stories, they got me uh, a CD. Instead, they were like, you know what? Halloween, because you're not making us waste an evening, we'll buy you one, you know, reasonably reasonably priced good. And I was like, you know what? Get me Chef Aid. The first CD soundtrack from the South Park universe. And to this day, I remember all of the words to Brad Taylor by Rancid. That's the end of that story. But if you like Halloween, that's cool. And I will say being bald is like the ultimate Halloween accessory. It's like the easy mode for Halloween. How many bald costumes can you come up with in like 30 seconds? There's Captain Jean-Luc Picard, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Kojak, Kingpin, Lex Luthor. You know, I mean, these are for people who are Caucasian and bald, I suppose. But still, you know, it, it holds. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of bald costumes. It's very easy. You can be Dr. Evil. You just got to get like the right outfit and then you're good to go. I guess that's true for Halloween in general, though. So, you know, I've, I've had an easy time at, at Halloween, but I haven't dressed up since, like... It's probably been six years. It's probably been since, like, my last year of, of college. If you're into Halloween, that's cool. It's not my favorite holiday. Give me a... You know, I, I like a Christmas, because you're spending time with your family, and you're eating some sweet-ass turkey. Occasionally, people tell me that they don't eat turkey on Christmas. You eat turkey on Thanksgiving and ham on Christmas. That You know, by all means, that's fine. You know, give me a... Uh, Give me a Thanksgiving for pretty much precisely the same reasons. I mean, think, think, let's be honest. Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter are all the same thing. If you don't watch the NFL, those that's just like, you know, fall Christmas, Christmas, and spring Christmas. At least that's the way it is in my family. I like Canada Day. You know, it's a source of national pride. I can understand why, why Americans like Independence Day. And I'm not talking about the film of the same name. Or, you know, why the French like Bastille Day. But either way, um, I understand that. You know, it's it's good to celebrate that from time to time. I'm trying to think of what else. There's other holidays, like, I don't really like. Especially, like, this year has been all, like, you know, you go on Twitter. And it's like, today's International Huevos Rancheros Day. And you go, oh, come on. You know, does Huevos Rancheros really need a day? Like, Huevos Rancheros get enough respect as far as I'm concerned. You don't need a Huevos Rancheros day. But maybe that's maybe that's my ignorance. Maybe I'm not an ally of the cause. I don't know. I do like Huevos Rancheros. Like, if, you, if you gave me, like, if I was at a Tex-Mex restaurant for brunch, 
Huevos Rancheros would probably be like my number one choice. It's not like I'm against it. Ooh, this is a good reroll opportunity. I think first, let's just fuck around with it for a second here and like try that, that on for size. And then we'll just blow this up. I'm trying to think of like, ooh, it's bloody lust, right? Yeah, it's not bad. Now if I get IV bag, I would be stoked. I don't mean to insult anybody with this, by the way. Um, you know, different people, you know, the different holidays mean different things to different people. I don't really care about Valentine's Day. And I say that, and the knee-jerk reaction online is always like, you know, Ooh, someone's in the doghouse tonight. But, like, you know, Kate cares about Valentine's Day more than I do. Still not a ton. But, you know, I, I quote-unquote celebrate. I, I engage with the customs of the experience. But at the same time, I'm kind of like, ah, you know, it's it's a Hallmark holiday. Not the, You know, sometimes it's good, though, to get a... I, mean, I don't get angsty about it. Only sometimes it's good to have a reminder, you know, to, to, to celebrate the things that you love and the person that you're with at the moment or the person that you want to be with, as long as you're not creepy about your display of love, and that's okay. Um, and even if you are creepy about it, you know, you, hopefully you get over it eventually. But either way, um, you know, it's really just Halloween and St. Patrick's Day that I'm particularly, like, you know, concerned with. And then St. Pat... Oh, you know what? No, 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 you know what? I totally realize there's one day that isn't a holiday officially, but is marked by a special event, at least in Vancouver, and it's really annoying, but at the same time I respect that it's a political issue, I don't want to step on any toes, but uh, 420 in Vancouver is just like a goddamn nightmare if you're a person who is trying to get to and from like a grocery store or your job. It is like there is there is a plume of I mean, I mean it's smoke. There's a plume of smoke. I was I'm not gonna say like it's toxic fumes or something, but you know, it's one of those things where you go outside and you're like, it's a beautiful morning, and then ten seconds later you're like, wait, something the sky does the sun normally refract light like that? And you're like, oh shit, I forgot, I scheduled something on 4:20. Now I gotta deal with this. And I, you know, eventually it's gonna be different because uh, our current Prime Minister has pledged, you know, marijuana legalization in, in Canada. So it'll it'll be less of a protest soon slash eventually, I guess, and more of, like, I guess, just the symbolic thing. And that's, you know, evolution, but at the same time, like, you know... Like, you know, like, 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 you know. I, I'm, I'm saying it a lot because I'm trying to be delicate here. Because I know that for a lot of people, marijuana legalization is like, it's a really important political issue. I'm not trying to make light of that. Um, I, you, you can probably guess my opinion, which is my way of saying whatever your opinion is. Just imagine that I have that one too, because it's irrelevant. But, um, it just, the, the city becomes kind of insufferable for like... 36 hours around it and I'm like yeah I get it like I agree you know like why is alcohol legal and you know weed isn't you know I've seen the cat scans and stuff like that but at the same time like can you not like blow that in my face I'm going to like my grandma's house like I get you know you just don't understand it's not really like that like people are largely non-confrontational just it's the same thing as like St. Patrick's Day where I'm like you know you don't, you don't have to just do this once a year, I guess, if that's your... I don't, I don't even know what I'm saying at this point. I'm, I'm trying to tiptoe too much. It's just people are annoying on that day, okay? They're annoying me with their social issues and the fact that they're like, Ooh, we're not being treated fairly and that's stupid. Why are we suffering from these antiquated laws? You know? It's like, you know, keep your problems to yourself. Complaining and protesting is never... I'm being sarcastic. I hope that... The, the danger with doubling down in the hopes that the sarcasm comes across more clearly is that if, if the sarcasm is not coming across clearly, people are going to be like, Man, NL's so ignorant. And maybe that's true. Uh, we're on the Necropolis too, so things are going really well. And we'll just donate and leave, I suppose. Anyway, long story short, those, those are the times when, you know, I mean, I would recommend being in Vancouver if that sounds like the kind of thing that you're being, you're like, you're into. The same, I'd actually say like even St. Patrick's Day is worse because it's, it's only on like St. Patrick's Day where you get on, you know, like a bus at 11 a.m. and some dude in like a plastic green hat with a shamrock and a leprechaun on it is like throwing up in the aisle and you're like, whoa, 
This is a, this is a great holiday. I'm not saying like bang, bang. I'm not saying ban St. Patrick's Day either. I'm just saying like, hey, can you just get like trashed responsibly and then like you know throw up at your house like a normal person? Anyway, this that's been this episode of Northern Lion Hates Fun. Except for the holidays where you spend time with your family, which clearly I've said that I respected. Uh, definitely take Goathead. Definitely take Dark Bum. And we can still get along, by the way. I guess we'll take a little Gertie. I mean, the other one is the um, Maggie's bow, but even Maggie's bow is not like exciting. It's just sort of there. Um, we can still get along. If you're a huge fan of Halloween, or you know, maybe you're actually Irish and you love St. Patrick's Day and you think I'm full of shit. Either way, like that's you know, it's all good. These are just my ignorant opinions that that may or may not have some validity or no validity. I'm trying to think of like other holidays. There's like a family day in in British Columbia, which is the province I live in. It was instituted a few years ago, you know, less than ten years ago, and um, it's a day where they were like, we don't really have a name for this, but why don't you take the day off and spend time with your family? And I remember people being like, that's stupid, doesn't even have a name. Why don't they call it like Diefenbaker Day or something? You, it's the greatest, they're like, hey, take another day off from work, spend the time with the people that you love, you know, you're probably not gonna live forever unless uh, Ray Kurzweil gets his way. So, you know, just enjoy yourself and then spend some time with your family. People were like, a lot of people were like, sweet, free day off. But a lot of people were like, this is st st stupid. Family day. We don't have like a Columbus Day in, in Canada. I'm trying to think. You guys, like in America, you have a lot of holidays. Like sometimes I'm like, dope, it's Victoria Day. I guess we do have a Columbus Day. Queen Victoria's, she's got her own uh, troubled history, I suppose, with colonialism. But wait, 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 wait. Was Queen Victoria involved with colonialism? Did she, did she oversee any British overseas holdings? No. Say it ain't so. Anyway. Um, so basically, fuck me. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, what are we doing here? Where, where's our trajectory taking us on this run? Well, like, it's a good run. We have enough speed where I should be using black powder way more often. I don't really want to do that room. Strikes me as a little annoying. I would like a higher rate of fire. Wow, that dodge! Um, but it's not like it's holding us back too much right now. But I will say, regardless of the implications from like an armor standpoint on the Hush fight, I just do not want to fight Hush with this run because I think it's going to be laborious. There are some runs where I'm like, this is this is built for Hush. This was made for Love and Hush, baby. This is not one of those situations. But that could change, thanks to the goat head. Unfortunately, we've gone in the wrong direction here. I mean, they could change thanks to a variety of items. The Goathead is really just enabling, or an uh, unenabler of that, but... Oh, the sneeze is real. Choo! <laughs> told ya! No. Guess what, folks? Mama's wrong again. I was trying to think, I lost my train of thought in there. No, Kono Sanders, you're wrong. Anyway. You know, you celebrate whatever holiday you like. I still like, without getting like too political here, when I'm, whenever I'm home for the holidays, um, I, I always see these ads. I don't know why I don't see them in Vancouver. There may actually be a reason for that. There may be no reason for that. But I always see these ads that are like, you know, stop the war on Christmas. And it, it sort of makes me realize that maybe I'm ignorant of the issues in the world. Because I'm like, every store in the world is playing the same music that's like you know it's christmas time in the city <laughs> you know you know that old tune silver bells i think it's it's christmas time in the city there we go ding a ling, ding -a -ling. hear them ring <laughs> it's john wayne sings your favorites I'm like man it's like it must be really doing a shitty job of fighting the war on Christmas because I'm hearing pro-Christmas stuff everywhere. You gotta step up your efforts, man. And that's that's as political as I'll get on that issue, I suppose. I just really hope that the war on Christmas doesn't ever institute like a draft because, you know, I'm still of fighting age and... 
I don't know, like, I'm not saying necessarily it's a cause that I don't believe in, but I don't really want to, like, give my life for it. So, you know, I might just say that's somebody else's problem. Much like everything else in the world, right? Including the Huevos Rancheros? Alright, we'll take Saki Bus, don't give a hoot. If it ain't Gant, then Ghost, baby. Do wap, do wap, do wap, do wap, do wap. Okay. Well, we're running out of excuses to, like, not do the hush fight. Really, because we continue to get better floor over floor, floor over floor. And we got a lot of keys. We got a lot of money. And actually, like, black powder has worked out pretty well. Hopefully this is the right direction. I hope I haven't rubbed anybody the wrong way. It's weird, because, like, you know, I don't want to talk politics, but I will talk about talking about politics. Because it's, I mean, 2016, is, it's an election year. And there's way more, you know, fervor over this election than I remember for the, uh, for the 2012 election. People were, you know, Obama to the re real bombing. You know, Mitt Romney is like, I'm not trying to be insulting, but it's like if Mitt Romney showed up in like season four of a TV show, you'd be like, he's, he's not going to say starring Mitt Romney. It's going to be like featuring, you know, recurring special guests, Mitt Romney. You know, he's not getting top billing. 2008, I remember, you know, that that was a huge election to the same, maybe a little bit of a less extent than, than 2016 with just the sheer, like, insanity of it. But there was, like, a, you know, that, that was, like, a movement, you know, the uh, the hope movement from Obama. They, like, galvanized people. That was, that was a huge election for sure, but this one might even, like, dwarf that. But I really find, like, I get annoyed. There were some YouTubers... And you know who I'm talking about. It's not like I'm trying to, you know, subtweet him or anything. Let's go fight Hush and I'll talk about this. And they were like, you know, if you don't share your political opinions, you're being dishonest. And I'm like, really? I could see that for some YouTubers, for sure. Like, depending on what your niche is. But I, when I play video games for amusement, who gives a shit? you know, what my political opinions are, especially as someone who's relatively uninformed. It just rubbed me the wrong way because it's kind of like this very, in, in my opinion, anti-scientific idea that, you know, everybody deserves to have, well, deserves is maybe a loaded word there. Everybody's opinion is equally valid. Or I'm like, you know, of course, I have a political opinion that I largely keep to myself, uh, in videos at least, and, and even in my home life, I'm not really interested in politics largely, although I do lean in a particular direction. I don't necessarily define myself by that as an identity, but either way, I'm I'm ill-informed about politics. In the same way, like someone who's ill-informed about science, I don't want them being like, "Well, I think the cure for cancer is, you know, apple cider vinegar," you know, and clogging up legislation for no reason with with ignorance. You know, I'm the same way about politics. Why should I be up here on YouTube being like, "Well, I, you know, Ben Carson was my guy because the pyramids are grain silos. Anyone could see." You know, it's just like. I think that there does warrant, you know, the separation of, like, entertainment and and serious issues like that. And I have no problem with you. You know, and I, I mean this sincerely. There's, like, there's some opinions that I consider, like, basically universally shitty. And if you are a fan of mine and you have these opinions, if we met in real life, we might not necessarily be on friendly terms, is all I'm saying about that. But for the most part... I really thought I could get around this and get that in there. I don't care if you, you're going to vote Democrat, Republican. As long as, you know, within the context of these videos, we're both having a good time. And maybe that sounds like a, like a cheap way out, but I'm, I kind of think, like, where do you draw the line? Like, do we really need to know everybody's political opinions? Like, you're in a, I'm not going to go to that restaurant. The chef's going to vote for Hillary Clinton. You know, they make a dynamite huevos rancheros. And the same goes both ways. Like, you know, I wouldn't shop at the convenience store. The dude who runs it is a Trump supporter. We, we're in a society where we, I think, should be more mature than that. And I know people have, like, strong opinions. And for a lot of people, this election in particular feels, like, cataclysmic. But... I still think that maybe you should just sort of like fuck off with that. I guess is where I'm coming at this from. It's like I understand like like the the problem is that it's way too easy to just be like you know, if you don't if you agree with me and you don't share your opinion, you're not an ally to our cause. You know, and and to some extent I can totally understand that, but you're like, okay, everybody's got to share their political opinions, but only because 
like you, you think they're going to agree with you and make your case stronger. If people started sharing their political opinions and, and by and large being like, well, I'd like disagree with you on a lot of things. You'd be like, ooh, well, <laughs> put the genie back in the bottle, please. This is getting like almost too close to real realness. But all I'm saying here is regardless of your politics, you know, your politics are irrelevant for the purposes of this video. For most of you, at least. You know, if you're like an actual neo-Nazi or something like that, I, I take issue with that. But apart from that, you know, we're, we're all human beings here. And, uh, you know, as long as you enjoy the content and I enjoy your, your, your patronage and your support, as far as I'm concerned, we're, we're hunky-dory. If you vote for fucking Harambe in the election, like, I think that that's a waste of your democratic right as, as a citizen. And I, I think in many ways, you know, hopefully later you would grow up and be like, man, I had a lack of intellectual maturity in that situation that, that led to me throwing my vote away on a joke, and I kind of regret that, or maybe you, you know, just never would. But I'd still be like, you know, we're cool. As long as you're not going into my chat being like, hey, hateful things, hate speech, you know, and then we're, as far as I'm concerned, we, we solid. So basically, that's my way of saying, you know, don't let don't let the American election this year distract you from from just being a good person. OK, you can you can be a good person and be apolitical. You can be a good person and you know, disagree with people on politics. It's all good. After November, we're all going to go back. We're going to be going to be friends again. We're all going to have to live with each other. You're going to have to go to that convenience store. You're going to have to go to the chef. You know what? Are you just going to... You, you, you want to be separate. You want to be surrounded by people who disagree with I guess that's what I'm... I just, I'm having trouble clarifying my points here. And I'm, I'm probably irritating a lot of people. Especially because it's such a hot button issue. But... Maybe we can all agree on one thing. And that's that Bear Taffy just signed on to play a an ice fishing game in virtual reality. And in a world where that exists... There's got to be hope. That's all I'm saying. You know, there's there's got to be a there's got to be silver linings. In a world where a lovable American man can play a virtual reality ice fishing game amidst all this chaos, I'll be goddamn if that's not the only message of hope that I need. Anyway, hopefully we're we're all still cool there. I I mean I really feel like this is we're not gonna talk about Isaac for the rest of this run. This is gonna be a win. But I had like a, you know, a, a cab ride when Kate and I were away recently, and the cab driver and I disagreed about a lot of things. At first, like she was like, you know, what do you guys do? And I, you know, had kind of like a standard script that I used to explain to people like what being a YouTuber and Twitch streamer is. And then straight up, she was just like, I think video games are eroding the fabric of society. Parents, you know, don't pay attention to their kids anymore. They just give their kids, like, a screen and tell them to run wild. And I was like, you know, on, on some level, I agree with that, but largely I disagree with you. And I think there's there's a very human tendency. I'm not, by the way, occasionally I treat people like shit and I largely am remorseful for it. But I'm just saying, I'm not like a paragon of virtue in, in my off-camera life either. But um, I think there's a very human tendency to be like, you're a fucking idiot. I'm not gonna talk to you with respect, but I kind of like, I got down to business and I, you know, we talked to each other like we were human beings and I still disagree with her point, but I understood her reasoning a little bit more. She, although I will say, she also told me that she doesn't trust self-driving cars because she's like, sure, I could put my granddaughter in a self-driving car and like send her to daycare, but who's gonna grab her out of the car when she gets to daycare? And I wanted to say, you know, well, like, it's not like if you get a self-driving car, only one person can go in it. Why don't you go in to daycare with your granddaughter and then, you know, get her out of the car, get her set up, and then tell it to, you know, drive you to the grocery store or drive you home or something like that. Like, I, don't, I don't really understand your point, but, I, you know, some things are better left unsaid in a, in a casual conversation like that. But, you know, I think it's easy to, it's easy to erode the humanity in a, in a hot, heated situation like, like we've had this year. And, uh... I look forward to to what I think is going to happen where, you know, as of like February maybe, we're all going to be like, wow, that was wild. No matter what happens in the election, you know, like we're all cool now, right? Like at least until 2020 when we repeat this dog and pony show again. Like we're all, we're all just going to like get along roughly. All right, sweet.
Like, not every third tweet on Twitter is gonna be about, you know, oh, this person's a shithead, oh, this person's a, you know, moron. Anyway. So this has been an episode of The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth, where I talked about politics for 25 minutes without ever sharing one opinion whatsoever, except that I don't like St. Patrick's Day <gasps> controversy. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching. Thanks for being a good person. And I'll see you next time.